Aberdeen woman captain Lauren Campbell announced her retirement from football after 20 years with the Dons back in May. We caught up with her to chat about some of our most memorable moments in football. Okay, first one. See if you, do you remember this one? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's from 2006-ish before he's went on a trip to Sweden. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Gossier Cup. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. I think what stood out for me is that it's you and your dad. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think we went to we went to the Gothia Cup twice. It was like a Youth World Cup um, for club teams, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So you go and compete with like, different club teams across the world. So I remember bag packing, <laughs> um, raising funds, doing stupid things because there was no massive sponsors. But I believe we did get some help. But yeah, my dad was part of. Um, I suppose the coaching team at the time with a couple of their dads, as it was back in the day, because that's that's how it was. Uh, it wasn't funded, it was yeah. all basically volunteers. So yeah, and uh, Ashley and Rachel, I remember those two. I don't know actually if either of them play anymore, so um, well, neither do I, but I think <laughs> they gave up a few years ago. But yeah, that was that was good times going to Sweden. Yeah, I think we were quite lucky. I think we were one of the first women, like youth women's teams mm -hmm. to do it. Hibs had done it before. Um, and one of our managers had been with them because his daughter had played in a yeah, we thought we were an okay team at the time, um, competing in Aberdeen. So we took the, the chance to go and then we went again, I think two or three years later. So yeah, that's good memories. But yeah, I didn't, I don't even remember that football <laughs> at all. <laughs> I think what's the, is, I knew it was your dad, obviously, because I've seen the name, but because he's at every home game that I've been at covering, he's been yeah. there too. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. Um, I think Mark touched on that. That was a bit emotional and like the sort of when the final interviews are done because he is there and so is uh, my boyfriend Gary now as well. So yeah, I'm probably going to have to sit next to them on Sundays <laughs> now. I don't know if my dad will give up his season ticket to, to the women's team. But yeah, he, and even before that, when I was younger, Scotland, Aberdeen, he would come across the world mm -hmm. and uh, watch me play. He would go to away games and yeah, occasionally even now if it's, it's a big big away game, he'll still be there. But yeah, he is, he's... Uh, he's still going to go every Sunday, I would imagine. When we spoke after last home game, you said that you kind of consulted him on the decision. I'm, is he as gutted as you are that you're giving it? <laughs> or? Uh, I don't know if gutted's the word. I think like we spoke about it in a while, we're gutted as it's like a good thing that's come to an yeah. end, but it feels like the right time um, for all of us. But yeah, it's going to be weird. Like my mum doesn't take much to do with football, very support it, but it doesn't come to my games or anything. But like there's a wee, a wee tradition on a Sunday that we play football and then we all go back and mum's cooked tea on a Sunday. So she still has cooked tea on a Sunday. <laughs> we'll let her know that. But yeah, that's been the way for like 10 years. So it's things like that that will change. But um, probably just have to go and watch them and then do the Sunday tea yeah. afterwards going forward. With your dad being part of the coaching team, is he kind of the reason why I started playing football in the first place? I'm sure he's supported you kind of throughout the whole time. Yeah, he wasn't the one that said, yeah, go and play football. Um, I've got four boy cousins. They were all involved and um, played football. Um, my dad did play football when he was younger and so did my uncle, but I grew up in a cul-de-sac and um, there was just loads of kids that played football. It was actually like a no ball game sign in the <laughs> park we played, we used as a post jumper for the rest and just played. So I don't know where like it came from. He always watched football, so it was maybe in the house and gave me that inkling to do. And then as soon as I started playing, it was just nothing but encouragement. Mm -hmm. But yeah, who, who took the ball out or who made, I don't know. I can't remember that far back, to be honest. <laughs> Well, there's another key person that stood out for the next photo. Okay. I think we're moving to 2007 now, so just the next okay. one. Okay. Do you remember this one? <laughs> I think it's before the uh, under 17 Scot when you were playing for Scot uh, Scotland, sorry, the, the European Championships. But what okay. stood out to me is, I know you're, you're still quite friendly with uh, Smalley. Smalley, yeah. yeah. Rachel Boyle, but it's Smalley um, permanently here. And then I don't remember this photo actually. This was this under seventeen. Under seventeen, yeah. yeah. Angela, she was a really good winger. She's a PE teacher, I think. Um, I'm not sure. She's she was from Inverurie, or don't know where she is now. And Rebecca Dempster, it was her dad that was one of the other okay. coaches. Um, I think Rebecca, she she went on, she went and played abroad and into Hibs and few other places down there. I think she's a firefighter now. Her dad was a firefighter and I think she's maybe taken over his job as well. So yeah, I don't remember why that photo was taken, but I remember that horrible SFA kit. That we used. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a regional squad. If yeah. you were good enough, you got selected and you went to this training, which wasn't great to be honest, once a week. But uh, at least that photo was in Aberdeen because I remember the four of us used to have to go to Elgin mm. and places like that once a week for this regional squads. But um, yeah, that's a blast from the past. But I think 
I know that you're neutral or friends, but the fact that football's given you much more than just football, it's people like Rachel that you've played with up until, you know, recently and come up coming up against each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a good picture from last season where he's are like laughing, go both going for yeah, the ball. Yeah, it's like I don't like people in the context that I stayed at our house the night before because we <laughs> are good mates for the first tackle. We're like, we just need to stay away from each other. Gav Beath was giving the pelters for that as well. <laughs> But um, yeah, Rachel, there's a, there's a group of five of us, me plus four others, that um, played not all in this team, but part of the women's team very early on and were best mates for life, um, been to each other's weddings, kids, you know, everything yeah. that we're entangled to. And, you know, people like Angela and Becca, I've not kept so much in touch with, but there are people you walk down the street and say hi. Like, it's just, I think I said in one of the, the interviews, one of the things I wrote when I left, it was the people that I've met, it's like the best part of football. Um, like when you go to school, you've got your schoolmates, but like the mates I actually have for life now are from, from football. Um, I think you end up, as much as you're a lot of time at school, you spend however many nights a week and then you spend most of your weekends with these people. So they end up being like the closest people to you. And I think uh, Aberdeen, especially like, cause you have to travel most Sundays. There's that like three to six hours mm -hmm. if you're going both ways. Um, that yeah, you get to know people. It's not just turn up for a train and play football with them and leave. It's like, that's I think what's a bit more special about Aberdeen. You get to, to spend time socially with mm -hmm. your team, um, not just on the pitch. So yeah, blast from the past, but yeah. How do when uh, if Rachel's got somewhere to put you up in four games, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, so I can still go to Hibs games. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next one, it's from 2009. Um, thing just struck me in that it, just kind of the pitch that it looks like it's on, it's different to kind of how you've ended your career playing at Balmodel Stadium, Pataudry and stuff like that. What do you remember of like the early days of playing in the top flight in your in your senior career for Aberdeen? Um, I remember we were playing, we had like a very good under 15s and 17s team. Um, so the club were very aware of that. We won a couple of Scottish Cups. So there was a group of us, um, Smalley was in that, Chloe Fitzpatrick, myself, I think Rebecca was at one point. Um, so we moved up together as a group, um, which was quite nice. Um, you weren't just kind of thrown in um, by yourself. But I remember playing youth football on a Saturday and then getting integrated on a Sunday, which isn't really done anymore. Everyone plays on the same day and it's a lot more professional. But it gave us so much game time because you weren't too concerned about how many minutes you got, you know, breaking into the team on a Sunday. So it was quite a good way, uh, way to do it. But yeah, a lot of it was grass pitches like that. Gemma actually, she's tackling me there. I played Scotland with her. She's a really nice lassie as well. But um, yeah, the oversized kit says a lot as well. <laughs> I think we've come maybe a long way in that aspect as well. But yeah, it was, uh, I think we were Hermes and Sunnybank where we played women's yeah. football to begin with as well. But I remember a lot of teams down the road still played on AstroTurf, I think. At, at that time, there was quite a few grass pitches in the north, so everybody that came north hated playing us. Like one, they had to travel, and then two, they came on oh, to yeah. this horrendous like bobbly <laughs> pitch, which when you were playing teams above you really, really suited us, to mm -hmm. be honest. But um, yeah, it was the norm, um, luxury pitches and fancy training facilities. That wasn't that wasn't an expectation. That was that was luck. I think even maybe in this season, the Pataudry car park outside the main stand <laughs> was still a training facility yeah. for us, as they'd called it. And I don't know if studs or trainers, nobody <laughs> knew what was best. You landed landed on your bum, um, at least one person a, a week at that. When, um, yeah, back in the days when, yeah, like I say, if big fancy facilities weren't part of it, but it was just, it was great fun, great laughs. Is there parts that of you that miss it back then when it was maybe just simply about the football. Now it's obviously great. We're on like Sky Sports, BBC Apple, <laughs> whatever. But is there a part of it where like that was just rooted in we're just getting to play and we're just getting to play matches. There wasn't all this other big picture stuff, was there always? Yeah, I know you forget now it's just like gone so professional, hasn't it? And all like media like we're doing today. But um yeah, I I don't think the girls now will maybe want to have played a part in that, but I'm glad I did because like you say, there's just such a massive uh, change. There was no there was no drama. We had some very good teams back then as well where everybody just grafted for each other. It was just about the laugh and about winning and just doing the best as you can. But yeah, like you say, um, I'm glad I, I got to be part of the, the change need. I think as well, I remember moving uh, like the first couple of weeks we got strength and conditioning. And like, I was like, we were just like, what is this? Couldn't lift the bar, didn't know what to do. But um, that's all expected now. And that was brought in and we were like, oh, this will never last. This is not the way it's going to go. And look at people are getting paid now. So yeah, 
a blast from the past, but yeah, good fun times. Like just football was wholesome. If mm. you would say like you weren't playing for anything, you were just playing with your mates. So it was good fun. Next one. It's not football related. Okay. <laughs> from your uni graduation. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, obviously you've got a very intense job. You're an engineer. How has it been over the years in terms of balancing education? Such an intense job of women in STEM, it's something impressive in itself. Yeah. How, how has it been to kind of balance, you know, your career and playing at the highest level for Aberdeen? Um, something I don't know any different. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I know that people say that, but that is just the way um, I've grown up. I, I started working at Wood um, when I was just turned 17. Um, it was like a modern apprenticeship, so I left school to do that. So I, I've been working from a young age as well, so it has been the normal. But I remember that four years passed in a flash, but I studied part-time <laughs> as well. So that was an intense uh, few years. But um, yeah, I remember I've been very, very lucky um, with people who I've worked for like you say STEM and being a woman in engineering but you work with men mm -hmm. who are obsessed with football <laughs> so it helps sometimes and I, I can say this now but I worked for a guy in Woody he's actually passed away now and I was his trainee and he was um, in the Tartan army die hard Tartan army so I got picked for Scotland 17s and 19s and he was I sh no, don't know if I should dog him in it but he, I would give him my, my schedule and he would be right right Lauren five days and you have to report in sick but anything less than that you don't <laughs> so he was like this trading camp you're going to be sick you're going to need to take this as holidays and he would divide it up for me um not saying I did actually or didn't take those sick days I'm not I'm not going to admit to that but um yeah things like that was people that helped help me through it but um yeah I went to uni two nights a week and trained two nights a week and then played football so I remember um sometimes even going straight go to work I had morning training in the morning, going to work, went straight to uni for an hour or two, and then I would ditch it early and I would be at Garth D for half seven because Alan Smith didn't think <laughs> uni was a good enough reason to, to skip football. You wanted to be in the start in 11 for mm. Sunday. So, yeah, intense kind of time, but I was young and I had energy when I'd done it, thankfully. So um, looking back, it's it's quite proud to, to say I've done that. But um, like I say, I don't, I don't know any better um, than cramming it in. And you say you don't know any different, but you know, the girls that you've played with at Aberdeen, you know, Maya's just left to be a full time yeah. professional footballer at Hibs. But would you say having something like that to fall back on, would you recommend it? I know a lot of the girls are stud still studying just now that football's not gonna last forever. Yeah. You must be grateful that you have had that, you've got such an amazing career and that football's not always been your sole focus. Yeah, and I remember I started at Wood just a couple, of, well, a couple of years before I started this degree. So I, I went to college day release before I'd done uni in, um, I got offered a scholarship. I was a year and a half into my apprenticeship and I got offered a scholarship to go to America on football. And basically my mum was like, don't even think about that because you're not going to get a career in football. And I probably still wouldn't have at my age, if you know what I mean, I would have been getting by, but I wouldn't maybe have like my house and my car that I do now. So um, yeah, I, I patched that to, to, to do this. And I think in the long run, it'll serve me well, but yeah, people like Maya, I would still say study something. You're only touch wood an injury away, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. as well from ending it. But jealous that these people get these opportunities. But I used football in the opposite way. I think I was like driven in my career when I was younger and then used football to switch off. Mm -hmm. So I think if she's got full time football or somebody like Maya who has full time football, maybe something to study is a way of switching off from yeah. football because I could imagine that's probably going to get intense for her at some point. But um, yeah, great opportunities out there. And I know like Rangers, they're pretty much full-time professional, but I know a few of them to begin with were, were helped out by getting, you know, part-time jobs if they had accountancy degrees and mm -hmm. things like that. So I think, yeah, even in the men's game, it's it's a wise thing to do to, to back yourself up with something. Yeah, definitely. Next one, I think this is before the 2016 season, which would be the season before that you scored relegated. Okay. <laughs> from the top flight. Um, Couple of things maybe on that one. Obviously, the picture includes the likes of Abby Harrison, Claire Shine, Kelly Clark, who are you know big names in, in yeah, Scotland and still there. Yeah. yeah. Um, kind of you look back at that and just kind of realise like how big a deal this has been throughout the whole time that these names are now you know playing for Scotland, playing professionally, winning Scottish Cup, playing at Hamden. It's quite nice to be a part of that, surely. 
Yeah, I remember this was like a launch was that was quite new. I think this year or the year before. Anyway, like to get this launch and a sponsorship sort of deal was was big, big news. Um, so that was maybe just the the, the start of all this um, coming coming to shine. Um, yeah, these Abby's doing very well, isn't she at Bristol and well Kelly's she's still in the game and Claire Shine she's got a, a different story, doesn't she, with her book and everything, which I've not quite got around to reading, but I, I have bought it so. Um, yeah, that was that was unusual um, to be part of part of that. Um, I can't remember. Was that the year we did get relegated? I think it was the season before. I think. I think we maybe even managed top six, mm. or maybe that was. I can't remember. But yeah, that was the first tiny experience of going down and being subject to media and asking questions and bits and pieces like that. But yeah. But like you say now, like that you were there for photographs only. Nobody ever imagined playing at Hamden, mm. and then you're just on the back of two finals being played there. So it's it's good to see how how far it's come and that yeah. the investment kept going rather than was just sort of tailed off. So. Have you gotten used to like doing the media stuff over the years? So obviously, you know, we've spoke numerous times. Yeah. You know, you speak to Mark as part of the club. Has it become something that you are quite happy to do because you realise like this is where the game's going and we need to do it? Um, I don't know because <laughs> it's you and Mark it just feels like that was the routine of the week you know you, we, like once we started up we, we got um, media small amount of media training from the club of what not to say basically <laughs> to be honest and then yourself and Mark are sort of familiar figures so it's not doesn't feel so much like media duties mm. when you do it to somebody but yeah I took part in like a, a lunch thing when I got interviewed it was like Joy Harper myself and Russell Anderson and mm. that was a bit like why am I here sort of things you know what I mean when you're part of Aberdeen so doing that was absolutely nerve-wracking I got I got a buzz out of after it but I was feeling sick and everything before yeah. I'd done it so I can't say I'm used to doing media things but speaking to yourselves posting pre-match is is fine but um yeah bigger things are still pretty daunting I think in the women's game at the moment would you want to move into it further obviously Emma since leaving has gone on to do comms for BBC Abel. Kelly does it as well. Yeah. Kelly does the stats for Opta. Is there stuff like that you'd like to go into? Maybe? <laughs> yeah, pinch their job. <laughs> yeah, you're saying. Yeah, no, I do. I quite like. The, I quite like the media. I quite like co like the commentary side of things. Yeah. Intrigues me only because I've done my badges and I quite like the shaping and tactical side of things. Emma would always like consult with me, and I learned a lot from her on that side of it. So yeah, it's something that. I think I would like to pursue. I've not, like I say, I don't really know what I'm going to do, but um, <laughs> yeah, it would be nice to get involved in that. And I think, regardless if if that happens or doesn't, I'll be I'll be following women's football. So yeah, it's just good to to keep up to speed and share your knowledge, I suppose, as well. Yeah. Well, speaking of Emma, she's in the next one, yep. and Kelly as well. Uh, kind of maybe the the biggest moment for for Aberdeen women is the photo at Petodje when the club announced that the team would be becoming part of the club yeah do you remember when you found out the news that it was going to happen because you know I look at it and I think it's obviously off the back of a really kind of tough time but there wouldn't be a team for the club to save if it hadn't been for people like you yeah. been stuck by it it must have been yeah. kind of like a was it a bit of a, a relief that that the club came in and, and kind of helped out yeah definitely I can't remember actually being told I but I remember the season before um a whole youth structure behind us like even at that point although we weren't affiliated and we we're at the top and there was rumors of well we oh, just ditched the women's team like is it worth it will we just like let it go and then um, there was a few of us um kelly there um, being one of them myself uh, well, tash as well and then it was chloe fitzpatrick but we were like you can't sink a women's team that has a full structure behind them it doesn't make sense it's just it's about rejuvenating, getting the next folk up or signing different people. Like, I don't see why this structure then mm -hmm. at the top you get rid of your women's team. But it was only run by volunteers at the time. So it wasn't anything like seriously done about it. And then, yeah, we got relegated, um, which wasn't nice. And to be honest, we had a good run at the end of that where we almost saved mm -hmm. ourselves. To fight. I think we had point deductions and something else that season. It was mental. Um, and we almost saved ourselves, but we couldn't quite do it. So. Then that summer to hear that that was happening, it was like just the perfect timing, like especially for Kelly and myself like that, it was someone to come in and rebuild it that wasn't voluntary, that wasn't us, that wasn't didn't have a clue what they were doing. It was like a structure that that came in and helped us do it. So yeah, it was it was good, um, and it was also yeah quite a relief um, to be honest at the time. Was it something that you had ever thought 
about as players or I never hoped or imagined it would happen or was it just something that was like quite, you know, it's never going to happen so let's just not think about it? Um, I don't know if I should say this but I know a couple of years before that it had been tried mm -hmm. um, by Alan Smith to ask if we could go in underneath them and they kind of said no at the time. I actually had quite a big sponsorship deal he had at the time and um, they were like, no, run with that, see how you get on. So because we'd asked a couple of times before, we just never thought it was going to happen. We always just thought we were going to run sort of side by side, but not ever be affiliated. So, um, yeah, there was doubt that, well, not even doubt, just like you didn't really think that th this this would happen until all the rumours that summer started happening. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was thankful um, that it happened. But, it, yeah, it was it was years on the line, to be honest. I mean, they could have, no offence to the club, taken us over two, three years before we would have been Premier League. But it, this this journey wouldn't have happened. And it was maybe easier for the club to, to let us build slowly and mm -hmm. let us come in and let the young ones come in because... Taking young ones into a championship team is a lot easier than taking yeah. young ones into a Premier League team. As, as you know, it's not so easy to get game time. So looking back, it's probably a weird way in saying relegations mm -hmm. helped the club in a way in the end. Obviously, you've been you know you've been at the club before Aberdeen FC came over, um, but having been there before and looking at it now, I know there's obviously still a lot of progress that needs to be made at the club for the women's team, but. How big a difference has it made being part of, of Aberdeen FC? Um, I think as a player, one, it's it's facilities, it's it's kit, it's it's travel, it's everything you've got on a match day. You you possibly want you don't have to to do bucket collections and all that, which I've been honestly involved in even at women's teams um, back. So that's nice, but I think it probably more comes from a management and a structure perspective and having finances behind you. Um, like I say, it was all about raising money, getting sponsorships before. Now, now a club takes care of that. So, And then the manager can just do their manager mm -hmm. role and the player can just do their player role. Um, back in our Alan Smith days, Alan done everything and tried to do a, a full-time job on the side. So big respect to him for that. But I know he said his business suffered just because he put so much effort in, into this team. So I think that's good um, for everybody involved, mm -hmm. basically. But yeah, as a player, it's nice to walk into Carmack Park, have have boots paid for all this. It's, it's nice. It's um, maybe what the younger generation will expect. But for folk like me, it's like, yeah, you, you forget. Because we've been involved at Aberdeen now for three, four years, that's now normality. But you yeah. forget that, yeah, that it wasn't like that whatsoever, I think. Even when I moved up to the women's team, I think I was paying to play for them, mm -hmm. um, probably. Or my dad was, I probably <laughs> wasn't, but still getting away with that. But uh, yeah, so it's, it's come a long way, definitely. Yeah, well, you spoke about the championship season. Invincibles. There's you guys lifting the trophy. It was obviously a step down to, to the championship from what you'd been used to yep. playing, but was it a fresh start? Did it feel like this is just kind of a, a place for us to start our, our kind of journey? And, what a way to start is unbeaten. I actually played for Montrose that season and I remember. Oh, sorry. <laughs> playing at Reading this weekend, you knew it was going to be a sore one. Um, you look back on that, it must have been kind of difficult in the, the level that wasn't maybe what you would hope to have been playing at, but a real kind of positive spin on it, winning the title like you did. Yeah, I remember um, we sat down as a group before this season started and I didn't know much about this league arrogantly because I hadn't been in it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And one of the young ones were like, I think we can win every single game. And I was like, aye, okay. Like, I don't think that's the most important part of that. Mm. But yeah, okay. Because it's not a clue of who was in it. So someone actually touted that actually right at the beginning of that season. And yeah, it was maybe a step down for myself, but as a collective, Emma and it was Harley at the time, um, taught us formations, taught us style of play, um, gave us that one team identity that we've still carried on uh, till now. So it was like a reset mode. Um, so as much as maybe the competition in the league wasn't fantastic that season, and yeah, Invincibles is good. I think we did have a couple of games that were... Draws maybe. Draw. <laughs> were they? I can't remember at the time. I know we didn't <laughs> win the cup. That was a disappointing part of that season. But... Um, yeah, it was a platform, it was a reset. And I think a lot of the work done in that season paid off in the next one. Mm -hmm. um, there was games where we could have gone out and won double figures, but we were keeping the ball, we were doing certain patterns of play, which probably used 
be playing against us. I had no idea that was like mm. the focus, but it sounds disrespectful, but that's what that season um, helped us do. And then on to the next one and we were flying. So, um, and then I remember as well, like going back, like this, the pre-season for that was unbelievable. Like I've had easier ones since, don't tell them that, but um, it was the first year we had, we were a part of the club and they gave us a sports scientist and we were just like, what is going on here? So we had an, we had probably the same standard of pre-season that we should have mm -hmm. now uh, that season as well. So we went and absolutely flying and it was getting used to strength and conditioning and conditioning and training in certain regimented ways with Emma and Harley. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, very enjoyable season because you got to express yourself have a lot of the ball, score yeah. goals. But um, yeah, there was a lot in that season that folk won't know that we worked really, really hard on that then gave us a platform to, to kick on. If you look at the photo, and the, one of the biggest things for me is that it's a lot of still the core group that are playing in the top flight now. I know that, you know, you see Jess Project there. I know, look how young she looks, yeah. But even still, she's still only, what, 18 now? I know, it's, yeah. um, It just shows you kind of, maybe obviously some of it's circumstantial in the Aberdeen recruitment wise are in a difficult position, but the fact that you've been able to take that team up to the top flight for the last two seasons and kind of establish themselves and progress and develop as players. Yeah, it's very good, isn't it? I think, like I was saying, when I when I was really young and I moved up to the women's team, we had a very good youth team. So there was four or five of us that moved up. And I think this team's probably the only team since that that done the same. Mm -hmm. So um, I think, well, like, you know, Ailey, Bailey, Eva, Jess, they were all first contracted and then Fran came in, I think, later on that season. So they're the, they're the core that are that they're still there now. Yeah, probably because they're from Aberdeen, <laughs> like keeping hold of them will be the next problem. But it's good to see. But um, yeah, everybody's got their own journey and that and most people are still involved on in which because we, mm -hmm. we now play against Joe, um, yeah. which is weird as well. But um, Anna and Lauren, they, they're up with Joe's and coming up as well. So. I think for an Aberdeen team, it's good, but there's a lot of successful people just in the North East, isn't there, that, mm -hmm. that has come out of that team, yeah. um, which is good. You mentioned about that season, set you up nicely for the next one. Another trophy lift, there's you, Emma and Kelly. Um, that was obviously quite a difficult season, even though you lifted the trophy, it took quite a long time to get there because of, of COVID. Um, yeah. It must be a weird season to look back on, the fact that you know you just won the league and you were rightfully back in the top flight, but kind of all the off the pitch stuff, global pandemic, it's... Uh, Did you really start that season? Yeah, it stopped yeah. and like, you didn't play for almost a year and, and it was still the same league. It was just fixtures needing to be made up. He's played like half a season within like, I think it was like eight weeks. Okay. Because he's had Wednesday nights and Sundays and just to make the time up and that's when he's won. He's and won did they July. keep that points or did we restart? Yeah, no, it, I think it, so one league was curtailed, stopped, and yeah. then it started again. And that's okay. when we went back into lockdown in Christmas time. Yeah. And then you just picked it up just before summer and you just won it in July and then SWPL started in September. Okay. So it was a bit of a whirlwind. I, um, I honestly can't remember that. Like it's so like not that long ago, but that pandemic was just mental um, football wise, to be honest. But yeah, I remember like we started, I can't remember who we played, was it two or three games? And then mm. they binned it. And then we're like, fair enough, we're not that far into it. Like no big deal for that. And then, like you say, we started again, but we started well. And then we were panicking that they were going to can it because <laughs> we were like, well, we've like, you know, people now know what you're about. If you're to start again, it's yep. different once you play everybody once. So, yeah, one of the, it was actually a brilliant season, um, even if it was in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, I remember training was bizarre. We turned up and we were in groups at one point, groups of three or four, all on the same pitch, but we weren't allowed to be together. That was one point of it. And then there was oldies and youngies was a group for a while, I think, I remember. And then I remember going to Hamilton and not being allowed in a changing room. Mm -hmm. So we got, I'm sure we won one on the last minute as well. So we went down, Emma and Harley and all that got off the bus. We got changed on the bus, went out, warmed up, got absolutely drenched, one one nil, back on the bus, no shower, nothing change back in and back up the road. Um, and that was the circumstances we played in. Um, and for a traveling team, there wasn't much North teams in that league, if I remember. So that was that was common for us. It's different if you can turn up in your kit and you're, you're round the corner mm -hmm. at home, aren't you, if you're part of the <laughs> Hamilton. But uh, yeah, I remember a lot. Of, and we all had um, seats on the bus. 
she like so you so if some ex I remember it was like me and Kelly weren't allowed to be near each other because we were in defense so if we both got COVID then that was like you're taking out a line so I remember we were and we had to stay and we had to wear masks and yeah bizarre but that that was the end result so we can't complain and I think remember after we came back the rules were a bit more lax so I think we did actually enjoy the second half of it as a team because um training was normal I don't think so we weren't allowed in the gym or changing rooms things like that but it became more normal towards yeah. the end of that and then thankfully we got to celebrate that as well because um we were allowed a barbecue outside or something <laughs> I remember at that time so at least that came together yeah. in the end as well because that was a, a very good season but like I say probably a lot of the work was done the year before but um yeah I didn't expect to go into that league either I remember sitting down and was it two two teams went up I think um yeah yeah uh, initially yeah I think Partick ended up going because of Forfer, yeah. yeah circumstance but they sat down and I remember the young ones again being like yeah we'll just go up and Bailey Hutch said we'll win this one we'll just go up and I'm like right, okay calm down Hamilton they're decent I've played this one before blah 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 and then yeah first game uh 4-3 win against Dundee United in the last minute and I think every game after that just more and more and more belief mm. sort of set in and then by the end we were flying and it was just like let's just get this this job done so um, yeah for, really successful campaign that one for maybe somebody like you that had been through you know the two relegations back to back when you've won that I know you've won the title or you've won promotion before actually getting the trophy but was yeah. there a sense of oh, we've done it we're, we're back in the yeah. top flight and I remember the, the day we won it um, I was captain because Kelly got sent off the, the week before and she tried to appeal it and everything because she knew we could win it yeah. at Dundee United and um yeah, and we won like 8-0 that day. We were so, so nervous. We we're like, we need to win this game. And then it's in, it's in the bed. It's it's done. It's early. And we were 4-0 up in about 15 minutes. And I was like, oh, wow. That, this, that's, it's done. Do you know what I mean? It's happening. So it was a weird game. So it took waiting for about 16 minutes for the final whistle. Because, like, no offence to them, the United, we knew we'd won the game that day. And I remember Kelly showed her kit on at the side. And she was the first person uh, I went to. And it was just like, we've done it. Like, because... Mm. I don't know like we knew we were doing it but like to actually do it we were like yeah we've done it we've completed it this was what me and Kelly were determined to do with being all the way down mm -hmm. and we're like we're getting them back up like before we go anywhere else so um yeah it was quite an emotional day but yeah it was just something that me and Kelly were just like glad glad that's behind us but um tough league we're in now so you never know if you can go up and down but especially with these playoffs as well but yeah it was very very good season. Well, probably one of my favourites on an Aberdeen shirt. Mm -hmm. And I know she wasn't there before she came on board when the club took over, but Emma obviously kind of built that team back up. Um, yep. She's played a big, big, big role kind of in the last four years. It must be sad that, you know, she's, she's obviously not at the club anymore, but after what she's done. Yeah, um, weird circumstances and, and how they left and all that, but um, yeah, she was the one um, as well that if you look back a picture I didn't know a lot of those youth players but she did she was in the youth systems long before so I think even before she got that job or applied for it she knew what she was going to do <laughs> with it because she's that type of person so she managed to to mix me and Kelly in with a lot of youth and get sort of the right balance especially for SPL too so yeah all the credit goes to, to Emma and Harley was there at the beginning as well he took off to do his own thing in Australia but yeah. that too from the beginning were were very very good people and Emma, uh, I still have met her for a coffee the other week, still keep in touch because she's, she's a friend for life now as well from football. But um, I know she's got ambition to, to go further and maybe perhaps to, to, go, to go elsewhere. So, um, yeah, I'm sure, sure she'll do that with someone else um, in a few years' time. Next one, another kind of personal uh, milestone for you. Being named captain of the club uh, at the start of the season that's just passed. It kind of feels like it was a natural choice after Kelly left. I've been her vice, but it must have been a real moment of, of pride getting the armband full time after being at the club for, for so long. Yeah, um, the year, like you say, the year before Kelly was captain, but she struggled a wee bit in that Premier League season with Achilles and various, which I can feel for her last season. <laughs> Achilles wasn't great either. So I had a taste for it, um, which was which was nice. And then, yeah, to officially be given it, but... It's funny if you go back and ask Smalley and all that, like, will Lauren be captain? She's like, oh, I'm not sure, because it was something I was never that, not keen on, but um, 
I like if even if you ask Emma, I'm still kind of the same. I'll turn up, I'll train hard, I'll play the game, and then I want to leave and forget. I don't like drama. <laughs> I don't like all the the like the news that breaks that goes with it. So that was that was um, something I think. Though as I, I grew up in age, you just learn to accept and get on with and and help the younger people. But yes, yeah, it's, it's nice. I've said in a few interviews as well. You come all the way from a youth system to then be captain. It was felt like you've accomplished the full mm-hmm. kind of full circle but it was it was a hard season to be captaining probably because it was just so tough but yeah managing a young team as well <laughs> I don't know if you've seen on the pitch but sometimes if it goes wrong it goes wrong disastrously because it's 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 I've played in teams where there was only a couple of young players and you can help control their nerves mm-hmm. almost but when there's 10 of them plus you sometimes it's quite hard but all the credits them were were good and tried hard but yeah, I did. Uh, as much as I enjoyed being captain, I missed sort of Kelly and Carrie um, this season, if I'm being honest, just mm-hmm. for someone your age to to bounce off and um, sort of speak things or discuss things through. Um, and then halfway through this season, Nadine came in as well, yep. um, Kel's partner. So she's good. She's more experienced than I am as well. So she has some good thoughts and helped me out a lot as well as there. So, yeah, um, like I say, full circle from youth to captain so it was it was good but challenging at the same time yeah I was gonna that's another thing I was gonna say it must have been a challenge I know there's obviously players like Hannah and Donna who've been there a while but maybe not as regular starters as somebody like you has been it must have been a challenge because you know at times you were playing in a back line with with three teenagers the person (laughs) closest to your age was 18 it's um difficult to kind of navigate on the pitch and obviously off the pitch as well because you know they're getting opportunities that maybe you didn't have when you were their age in football that you're trying to navigate that with them but also support them through yeah. stuff that maybe you didn't go through it's it's kind of tough all around yeah i know i know and then there's some friends i've got that uh, i've quit the game and they can never go back and watch it because they find it too hard mm-hmm. um but i think because i've seen full spectrum um and there's folk in the team that get opportunities I don't know if jealousy is the word because I've enjoyed my journey. Yeah, would I like that to happen when I was eighteen? Probably, but I don't. I don't feel bad for it or hard done by. Like I've enjoyed my journey, so to see these players kick on and then I've said to Maddie and Bailey, like I want to say one day I played with her when she's playing for Chelsea or whatever. So I've set them, set some of them. You better be pro so I can mm-hmm. claim claim I thought you at all, <laughs> but. It's hard, but I think credit to to the young ones that have come in, they listen very well. Like, yeah, they'll be learning curves when we've got we've got beat. But um as a captain as well, it's I've learned a lot probably to take me forward in my life and other things on how to speak to people as well. Some mm-hmm. people can be shouted at and take it. Some people need to be maybe molly coddled a wee bit. Some people just take instruction and do it. Some people take three or four talents of how to do things. So it's all about building your relationship with your team. Um and I remember being told that at a younger age, there was me, Smolly, Chloe and Nikki, who are all my best pals now. Alan, our manager, could scream and shout at us and we would stick our hand up and say, right, OK, even if I don't agree, it's my fault, but yeah, I'll take it. And then there were certain ones in the team that if you shouted, it was they would play even worse. So you used them, us, to channel that into maybe sending a message to someone else. So I think maybe thankful for that in a way, because I understood what them when I moved into a team where you're the higher up, mm-hmm. you know, person that, oh yeah, wait, yeah, she will just collapse or she'll play worse if I say X, Y, and Z. And um, that I'll take away from as a big learning curve from from this season, definitely. Yeah, and kind of what players you might mean that need to start getting guidance. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you go to the games, no comment. <laughs> um, next one, captain for the women's team at Patoji. It was obviously the second game. Going back to maybe the first game, uh, almost 2,000 people on that Wednesday night. I spoke to Kelly uh, and she said that you were as white as a ghost, which is how she'd <laughs> never really seen before, that you were always quite calm and composed. Did it feel like a massive occasion stepping out onto pathology for the first time? Yeah, the f- I wasn't as scared this time. Um, and no offence to Glasgow women, but it was probably to do with opposition. Mm. I think it wasn't it wasn't the crowd, it wasn't the stadium or anything. It was like, oh, I'm going to wait to play Rangers. I know that sounds bad, but our way to play Rangers in front of 2,000 people, this better not go wrong. Um, as much as I have all my faith in my teammates, and we played so well that night, um, and 2-0 when their goals were quite lucky as well. But it was, yeah, it was the, oh, this could be um, 
such a good moment turned into such a bad if we were to to not play well or they have a very good day as they sometimes do so yeah Kel I remember Kel was like you're all right and I was like nope <laughs> she was like what and I was like yeah it's all right just deal with it and I went and as soon as as soon as you kick off you're fine mm -hmm. um there's been a few moments I think in the last home game um, that I played here I was the same I couldn't wait till kick off I hated the build-up I had messages all that day and I was like this is just not what I want I just want to play football for 90 minutes and as soon as you kick off it's, it's good and it was it was amazing actually the one the Wednesday night at Rangers was absolutely brilliant mm -hmm. it was amazing and I think as well I think I say the crowd didn't affect me but it probably did because everyone used to look to me and Kelly or their experience like they'll look to them they'll know what to do me and Kelly haven't played in front of 2,000 people. Like, we came from back however many photos ago when it was, like, your dad and you were lucky if your cousin came and watched you. So it was like, oh, they'll, they'll be fine. But we hadn't played in front of a lot of big crowds. Yeah, a couple of hundred or something. But, um, yeah, it was good. Um, that that day was it was good as well. It was Glasgow women, so um, we felt quite... Although, we hadn't, I don't think we had won a game before. It's the first one of the season. Yeah, so there was pressure. It was pressure on Emma, pressure on Gal, pressure on us, but... Um, it was an enjoyable one. It was a good weather day as mm -hmm. well. So all around it, it was a really good day. And then, yeah, um, I wish we won by more, to be honest, for the crowd that day. But yeah, at least we won comfortably. And um, yeah, good day, good memories. I, I remember my dad's next door neighbour, Jessica, got to walk out with me as well. Oh, so she always asks me how my football's doing <laughs> ever since. So hopefully she'll play football next as well. Yeah, I think with that, no matter what happens with Aberdeen women, whether, you know, they invest so much money and they're winning SWPL one titles or Scottish Cups, whatever. Hope so. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. But you'll always be in the history books as a captain to lead the first Aberdeen team, women's team to win at Pataudry. Yeah. That must be something that you kind of, you'll look back on it even now and think, it's pretty. Pretty yeah, I know. I think like because because you forget of the the point of where we join. Like mm -hmm. I just feel like you know you got your hundred appearances, and I was like, oh yeah, okay. But I mean, we're on however many hundreds, so it, like <laughs> you don't target these things. But and at that time, you're just you're just buzzing that the club have let us play at Pataudry, let alone like what's going to happen when you play there. But yeah, I remember when we sat down that season to set targets and I knew I was going to be captain. That was actually one thing I said. I was like, I want to win at Pataudry because we'd played at Pataudry and we'd done well and had a good performance against Rangers, but we didn't win. So I wanted to be part of the first team, uh, women's team to win at Pataudry. So yeah, that was a massive tick in the box. So yeah, captain's just a bonus. I would have just been happy to be part of the winning team. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was an absolute boost um, to be captain that day. Last one. It's from your last home game against Dundee United. Um, feels like a nice one to end on because with that measure at the How's Your Touch thing, that Emma said that the biggest thing for her is when people are asking for your autograph and your photo after games and that, you know, they want to be Lauren Campbell. <laughs> it must be from, you know, what we spoke about from that first picture when you were like 15 years old to now, could you have imagined that people would be, you know, have their, your name on the back of their shirt or asking <laughs> for autographs and pictures, you know, in your final game? I know. And I still don't really get it when they ask for your signature because I'm like, what are you going to do with that? But yeah, it's 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 great to grow the game. And I remember going to a trophy day for this this Bankery team as well. So we made a good connection with them that, that last season. But um, yeah, it's it's weird because I think I just, like I said in one of my tweets, I think I've just played football for 20 years. Like that's all. I know it sounds like, well, that's all you did, but I just enjoyed playing football. Um, I remember meeting one of the guys I went to school with a few years ago in town and he was like, do you know you're the only one in our year that still plays football? So all the boys have, have and they make, they're very good footballers as well, like made it to Montrose and places like this, like no longer play mm. football. So a couple of years ago, I was like, oh, yeah, I suppose that is, um, I suppose especially for a female as well, to, to be the one that still plays football. So yeah, things like that sink in. But to be honest, like until you, people like yourself and Emma, right, how's your touch? It's... I never meant to do any of that. I just played football, like I say. It is iconic that it's all been at the, the same club, but at the same time, where else was I going to go? Unless I was mm -hmm. willing to travel and there was no payment. I, like, I did, I've, I, I was asked, um, I went to Forfar for a very, very short period. I was asked to play for a like I was approached for a few teams, but at the time, I had such a good career. Mm -hmm. um, and then football was just enjoyment and I was playing with my mates. Like I had some fantastic people to play with so why would you move away from 
a club like Aberdeen and then Emma comes in and it, it's just like a dream come true that it then starts to have this professional platform and moves forward. But yeah, that was the worst night, <laughs> worst class best night of this season because my retirement, I knew was happening, but it got announced that morning. Mm -hmm. And then I was sitting at work and folk just kept messaging me and tweeting me and I was like almost in tears for the whole day. And I was like, this is just not what was supposed yeah. to happen. Said to Mark, I was like, I'm going to retire and you're not going to make a big deal of it. And exactly the opposite happened. So, which is nice. Like it is a nice thing to happen, but just wanted to play football. So yeah, I remember feeling pretty sick for that afternoon. <laughs> and then as soon as kickoff happened, I was like, yes, yeah. like I just want to play football. But afterwards it was, it was brilliant. Um, Emma was there, the girls like Kelly, old but gold, we call ourselves, so I have to leave that in. They were there, um, my dad, some of my dad's mates, like loads of people came out then, made the effort to come to that game. So yeah, it was really special and brilliant that we won it in the last mm -hmm. minute as well. That uh, played with Bailey for, I don't know, three or four years and she scores last minute one v ones all the time. So it was just like, yes, really, that was how it was meant to be done. So. It, it was good. And then even you've got Joe and Tash who we played for for years on the opposition team. Harshly for them, obviously we won, but it was quite nice to, to have them there as well. And um, mm. strangely, because they were a big part of the journey as well, although they're at United now. So obviously where Aberdeen women are at now, they've got a fan base, like say people asking for your autographs and mm. stuff afterwards. Where would you like to see the team go? You know, when you're looking back, I'm sure you're going to stay involved with them, keep in touch, but in like five years time, where would you like to see them? Yeah, as high up, I think, and winning everything they can, to be honest. But um, I was saying it's it's quite a scary time to be in women's football. I think the growth of the game is excellent, but you've got to keep up with it. <laughs> and I think it's it's um, there's a few teams, even like Reading, you see, mm -hmm. in the you know reverting back to part time football. So if anything, I know trophies and that are very very hard to come by as an Aberdeen club. <laughs> and as in the women's football. So I just hope that so far every year we've been affiliated with Aberdeen, they've improved and they've invested more. So I hope that happens every single single year. But I think there's a, there's a good core group of players there at the moment. And I think it's important to try and keep them, um, to be honest. So I think hopefully that's the first footsteps. And I know the clubs have been in talk with these players. So yeah, I wish, I just, hope one they stay up again because I think it might be another hard season coming just with investment and I know Hearts have got their budget doubled and um, Hibs have improved again I know teams were still chasing but um, but I know our investment has gone up this year so I hope that just pays dividends to be honest um, like I say some of my my friends that I've played before can't go back and watch it because they find it too hard because they miss it but I don't think yes I'll be it'll be hard and I will miss it but I'll definitely be there um, want to stay involved in some way and yeah like I say I don't know what that is as of yet but um, I won't be a stranger to women's football or, or Aberdeen that's for sure.